Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Now today in my soap I'm making a gardener's scrubby soap and I'm going to be using some slightly more unusual additives. The first of these is a rose hip powder and then secondly I'm going to be using some ground apricot seeds. Now this is going to be a pretty basic soap because I want my gardener soap to just have really sort of plant-based natural type things in it. So I've measured out my oils and my lye and I've also worked out how much of the rosehip powder and the apricot seeds that I want to use and I've measured those out as well. I'm going to be fragrancing this with an essential oil blend. So I've got a combination of lavender, Litsi Kubea, which is the same as Mei Chang, and some Cedarwood Atlas. Now do make sure if you're going to be using essential oils in any of your cosmetic products that you're happy with what you're doing because it can be dangerous to use them at the incorrect amounts. Now in the US you can obviously use EO Calc to give you some help. Be careful though if you're in Europe or in the UK because quite often the recommended amounts on there are not allowed in the UK or the EU. So for example I've just got a little shot on the screen where I've just put just using Litsia Kubea in a soap and it's recommended up to 5% usage. Now because of the citral content in Litsi Kubea in the EU and the UK you're not allowed anywhere near that amount of Mei Chang in your soaps and in fact all essential oils will be limited to a maximum of 3% and when you're blending there are further restrictions as well. So just do make sure that if you're using essential oils that you are confident with what you're doing. I am also adding a small amount of rose clay into this soap as well. Um, one of the main reasons of doing that is just to help to anchor the essential oils a little bit. But hopefully with the blend that I've chosen they should be pretty good at sticking in the soap anyway. So to prepare my additives I'm going to add a little bit of my base oils to my rose hip powder and just give that a good blend round just to make sure it's going to blend into my soap nicely and I'm not going to have any lumps and bumps and bits of unmixed rose hip powder. The apricot seeds are actually quite free flowing so therefore I'm not going to bother with pre-mixing them with anything they'll just tip in and they'll just spread out through the soap nicely. And then to make my soap I'm just going to take my lye and my oils as normal, combine them together and blend them to emulsion. Now this essential oil blend is not going to do anything horrible to my trace even though I've got a little bit of clay in it and to be honest I'm doing really simple pour anyway so I'm going to put all of the essential oils and the clay in now because I want it through all parts of my soap. I am going to give that a nice blend in partly just to make sure that that clay is really nicely dispersed even though I have already dispersed it into the essential oils and also just to thicken up this trace a little bit and as I said this essential oil blend if anything decelerates my trace so I want to get it going a little bit. I also want my apricot seeds throughout the entire bar of soap so I'm going to pop those in now. Now at this point my trace is still really really light and normally if you're going to add some sort of exfoliant um, you would wait till it's a little bit thicker especially if it was something like pumice or anything because that will just literally then just sink right to the bottom of your soap. 
However, the apricot seeds are really light and quite floaty. So you can actually get away with adding those in fairly early on, which is great because then it allows you to have a slightly more fluid batter if you were going to do any fancy old designs or anything with them in there. So I'm just going to give mine a really good old mix round just to make sure that they're nicely dispersed and I've got no lumps and clumps. I will then just leave this for a minute or so and then have a look at the batter just to make sure those seeds aren't sinking. But typically they do tend to be all right. Um, these are actually ground seeds, not whole seeds, so they are nice and exfoliating, but they're not rip your skin off type exfoliating. Now, although this is going to be a very simple soap, I do want some element of a little bit of a design in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put the rose hips in some parts of the soap and then have it without the rose hips in the other parts. And what will happen is those rose hips, even though they're a light orangey colour now, they will actually discolour the soap. So we should actually see a difference between the bits with and the bits without the rose hips. So I'd poured off a third of my batter to not have rose hip in and now I've got the remainder of my batter and remember that pre-dispersed rose hip powder? I'm just popping that into the rest of it. And then I'm just going to split that batter with the rose hip powder in it evenly into two bits so overall I've got three equal portions of my soap. Now at the moment I've got to be a little bit careful because you really cannot see the difference between these two batters. That one I've just stirred doesn't have the rose hip in whereas the one that I'm stirring now does have the rose hips in. So all I'm just doing is just making sure I've got to the point where I do at least have a very light trace before I start my pour. And as you can see with this um, essential oil combination and even all those additives, it really hasn't sped up my trace at all. So these are good things to be using. Okay then, so let's pour our soap. Now as I said, I'm not doing anything massively complicated. I kind of just want to do a three layered soap, but I want the layers to be sort of quite jaggedy. Almost sort of pointy layers, but you know, not quite. So just sort of like rough, jagged layers that I've got. So in goes that first lot. Now that first lot does have the rose hip in. And I just poured that into my loaf mould. I do always pour over a spatula or something, even if I'm not trying to break a layer, just because then that allows the batter to go into the mould a little bit more smoothly and introduces less air than if you just pour it all in on top of itself. And then my next layer that I want in is the one without the rose hips. And I'm just checking because they're very, very similar in colour because the discoloration hasn't started yet. And all I'm really doing is sort of a, I guess, a loose interpretation of a pointy layers. I'm really just going for a sort of jaggedy layer in the middle here. I'm not too worried about any specific design. I am pouring it quite gently in little streams because I don't actually want this to turn into a drop swirl with the lighter layer plunging through the other layer. I just want each of the layers to have a little bit of a jagged effect to them. And then I'll repeat the process with that final layer. So again, just sort of breaking through a little bit to get a sort of jagged layer, but then just layering the rest of the batter in so it doesn't fall through and give me a drop swirl. Thank you. 
And then on the top, I'm not really going for any sort of specific pattern or design. I want it quite a simple bar all the way around the edges. So I'm just using um, the end of my little metal thermometer just to clean up the side of that loaf and just sort of evenly spread everything around before I tap it down and put it in the oven. I am going to see pop this in the way that I normally do. So I just thought I'd show you. Um, I do cover all of my soaps with the lid on the loaf mold, but I also always wrap some cling wrap around it as well. And basically I just reuse and reuse this little bit of cling wrap um, just to make sure I get the smallest amount of air in against that soap as possible. And then that really helps you along with a good water discount, helps you to cut down on any soda ash. So this will go in the oven as normal, heated to 170 degrees F, 70 degrees C. I'll turn the oven off as the soap goes in and leave it there overnight. And then here we are with our soap the next day. It's going to be a fairly simple design on the middle and you can see now how that discoloration is already starting to show. Now as we know these bells are going to be fairly straightforward simple bars and that that's actually what I wanted. I didn't want anything complicated for my scrubby gardener's soap. And there's our little jaggedy layer in the middle and then you can see by how dark the edge is that those rose hips will actually make the top and bottom layer go darker than they are at the moment. So the difference in the layers will actually show even more. I am really pleased with these bars. I think they've come out exactly how I wanted. They do smell really nice. That Litsy Kubea is nice and strong as a scent and it hangs in there much better than a lot of citrus scents do in cold process soap. Also the feel of them when you use them just seems to give a really lovely um, amount of scrubbiness without being too harsh. And I also like the fact that I've managed to just stick to sort of planty type things to give me that exfoliation and the colour. And then here are some final pictures of the soap. I hope you like the soap and that you've enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit more straightforward than a lot of my soaps, but I really enjoyed the chance to play with and use some different additives in my soaps. And I'm ever so pleased with the way that they've come out. These will be for sale in the shop, but I do need to wait until my cosmetic safety report has actually come through before I'm allowed to list them up for sale, but they will be there. If you've enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!